So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to write the methodology section for a research paper and it will also be very similar to writing the methodology chapter for a thesis so if you're writing a thesis not a research paper you should also stick around so without much further ado let's dive in and i'll show you step by step which elements to include and how to structure the methodology section for your paper if you're new here my name is marek tichkowiak and i help phd students and researchers regularly write research papers for top journals in their field and if you want to work with me more personally then definitely book a free one-to-one -one consultation in which we're going to go over your main challenges your goals and then see how and if i might be able to help you to publish in better journals now with that said how do you write a methodology for a research paper or a thesis first of all it's important to point out that in some fields it's going to be called a methodology in other fields especially in more exact sciences it's going to be called materials and methods but whatever it's called it's basically the exact same thing now the second point before we dive into the exact structure is that some elements are kind of optional dependent on which field you're in other elements will be there regardless of which field you're in whether you're doing second language acquisition quantum physics or maybe biology these um, compulsory elements will always be there so what's the first thing that we typically do in a methodology now this first element is optional and it depends on your field and it's called the research context so basically what you might need to present is where your study was conducted this would of course only be done if the context is important for your research so let's say if you've done um, your research in a laboratory or if you just use existing data on economics right for example then your research context is not important but on the other hand if you you know if you for example like one of my clients is doing research on um, emigration from a certain country in Southeast Asia after cyclones right and after the disasters that the cyclones cause then obviously the context in which that research is done right so the people that live there uh, what that area is like the geography of that area and so on and so forth is very important for his research therefore you know the first section would be to present that research context now the second element and this is the first kind of obligatory element is to present what or who you study right in more exact sciences this will be just called materials right and then we'll get into the methods in you know more socially oriented studies or studies that study people often it's called sample and sampling techniques right and what you do here is you present either the human or animal participants right depending on what you studied or you present the the material that you studied right and what you need to do is to give us enough detail about the the sample or what you studied uh, so that we can understand then what the procedure was and how this thing was actually studied so if you studied people participants you need to tell us you know who they were give us some background information if you studied particular chemical materials let's say you need to tell us as well what they were what the properties are and things like that now as you're doing it you know what you also need to do is to present what often is called the sampling techniques especially if you have human participants um, what are sampling techniques the, the basically the ways in which you got um, your sample or your participants for your study and it also applies to you know studying physical materials right because you got those materials somehow for your study you either bought them from another company that produces them or you produce them yourself so that's why you need to tell us how you know how you got these materials that you studied or how and where you got these people or animals from that you studied right and of course the different ways especially in social sciences of sampling people and choosing your sample so you need to define it and justify why you did it like that right now then we're getting after the materials we're getting into the methods part right and the, the first important thing here is to present the research tools in other words you want to present you know what instruments you used 
to study that particular thing or that particular group of people, right? In social sciences, a tool would be, for example, a questionnaire or an interview, right? Now, in more exact sciences, well, you have machines, right, that you can use to study a particular uh, chemical, for example, right? So that would, that would be a tool. So you need to tell us what you use to study that. And then connected to that, right, is the procedure. So you want to tell us step by step how you actually studied your sample, your people or your material. Step by step, what happened. Now, in order to organize this properly, if you have several different instruments that you use, it makes sense to have subsections. And in the first subsection, you're going to present the first research tool and the first procedures that you use with that tool. And then in the second subsection, you're going to present the second instruments and the procedures that were used with that instrument. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button and that little bell button there as well, so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now, after the research tools and procedures, what do we do next? Well, then we present how we analyzed the data. So we don't present the data itself, but we present, you know, either the statistical tests that we use or the qualitative methods for analyzing the data, like for example, grounded theory, or we also um, present any equations, right, that were used to analyze the data. Right? So this is data analysis techniques. And sometimes, you know, if the analysis technique is not that common in your field, you might need to kind of define it and describe it in a little bit more detail. Or if you're using some sort of new equations that you derived, you, you will need to present those equations. And you might need to justify why you chose this particular data analysis technique, this particular equation and not something else, right? And a good way of doing it is to refer to previous studies and for example say that, you know, this, uh, we follow the same procedure for analyzing data like X, Y and Z, who also use this equation, right, to add validity to what you're doing. Because if obviously if other scholars did it successfully on a very similar sample, then it makes sense for you to do the same thing. Now, one last element that's either kind of a section on its own or it's sometimes attached just as a couple of sentences to when you're describing um, your participants is ethical considerations. And this only applies if you have human or animal participants. And here what you need to tell us is basically how you maintained good ethical practices, right, in your research. So for example, if you have human participants, you obviously need to maintain the anonymity, right, they need to sign an informed consent and so on. If you have animal participants, you need to make sure that, you know, you're not harming them um, excessively and things like that, right? And this could be either a small separate section if there is a lot to write, or it can be, you know, just included as a couple of sentences when you're presenting your sample. And of course, if you're just using a data set or you're using some chemical materials, then you don't have any ethical considerations, so there's nothing to include, right? So that's the overall structure of um, writing the methodology. So to recap, you start with a research context. If, the, if where your study was conducted is relevant, then you tell us um, who or what you studied and how you got this thing. And then you present the, the methods, so um, the research tools and the procedures, and then the data analysis techniques. And this works in any field, whether you're doing quantum physics or teaching English, it doesn't matter, the structure will be exactly the same, also for a thesis and for a research paper. Now, if you enjoy this video, but you'd like more personalized help, to regularly write research papers for top journals in your field, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation with me and my team. We're gonna jump on a one-to-one -one call and identify the exact challenges that you're currently struggling with. And then we'll also show you how we might be able to resolve those challenges in the shortest possible time so that you start getting results and start getting published. And the link to that one-to-one -one consultation that is completely free is just below this video.